Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn, and today I'll be flying solo. But as always, welcome to our show. Well guys, we got another exciting episode for you this week. But first, we just want to let you guys know about a little change that we're trying to work through right now. So, you know, YouTube, if you're familiar with YouTube and their streaming services, um, they used to use Google Hangouts, which is what we used every week. But unfortunately, that went away this past weekend. So, you know, now we're trying to find other avenues and ways to stream. So bear with us for right now. But, uh, you know, that's kind of why I'm by myself this week. Unfortunately, Pat w wasn't able to uh, find a time to film with me because we tried to film um, using another streaming site, but it didn't really work out so well. But, uh, yeah, so bear with us. You know, we're trying to figure that out and work through it this week. And, uh, you know, we hope to find a different avenue for you guys next week. So, uh, you know, with that being said, we have a lot of exciting news to cover this week, though. Um, you know, we had an exciting player debut uh, in the Premier League that, you know, everyone I feel watching this show would know about. Um, we also had another exciting debut over in Ligue to talk about, so that'll be fun. And, uh, you know, a lot of transfers that, that also happened over the past two weeks. So, you know, all that and more in this episode. So to start off our episode this week, we're going to talk about a player who everyone was super excited to see make his debut, and that would be none other than Christian Pulisic. So Christian, unfortunately, didn't start off, uh, you know, in the starting 11 for Chelsea this, this weekend, um, you know, in their debut game in the Premier League. But, you know, nonetheless, Christian did make his debut. He came on in the 58th minute for Ross Barkley. And at this point in the game, Chelsea were down 1-0. Um, you know, they played a very good first half. There was a penalty that I believe, I think it was Kurt Zuma gave up in the first half that, um, you know, allowed Man, Man United, excuse me, I almost said Man City, uh, take a penalty. I think, I believe it was Marcus Rashford. And, you know, he was able to give United that early lead. And, um, you know, at, at, at points in the first half, it definitely looked like Chelsea were the better team. They had Man United where they wanted them, um, you know, multiple times. They had some really nice attacking play to start. But, um, you know, unfortunately, right after Christian Pulisic subbed on, um, you know, United got another goal and then they scored yet another goal uh, right after that second one. So I believe it was in nine minutes after Christian Pulisic came on, Man United went up 3-0 on Chelsea. So, you know, not the debut that, that Christian wanted, of course, and, you know, not the situation he wanted to be thrown into either, um, you know, coming on in this game. You know, we all kind of wanted to see him him start his Chelsea career in the starting 11, you know, as a, a major player for them, um, you know, kind of being the star of the team. But unfortunately, that's not what Frank Lampard had in mind for this game. And, you know, it kind of it kind of hurt them. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm a little biased. Uh, you know, for Christian, but this game, you know, all the good movements and attacking sequences that Chelsea had, uh, especially in that first half, you know, they just lacked that final, um, not even that final pass, but just that final um, skill or final bit of magic in the final third. Um, and I think that, you know, if Christian started this game, I think, I think he could have provided it and, you know, could have made a difference and, and changed the outcome of this game. But, you know, unfortunately, Frank Lampard went with Mason Mount over him. And, um, you know, I don't think Mason Mount played bad, but, you know, he wasn't able to do, you know, get Chelsea uh, ahead. You know, he wasn't able to, you know, put Chelsea in the position to, you know, take the lead and, and uh, you know, just, just take the hand in this game. It always seemed like... Um, you know, for all the good things that they did, they, they just they just couldn't finish. And um, that was unfortunate to see. So, you know, Chelsea ended up losing the game 4-0. Um, like we said, you know, not the, the first performance that we wanted to see from Christian Pulisic, uh, you know, from Chelsea with Christian Pulisic in the lineup. And uh, yeah, it was definitely, you know, disappointing. You know, we, I felt for Christian when, when uh, the game was up, you know, it was, just kind of uh, 
the whole day was kind of defeating. Um, you know, there, we, we had the, you know, I know a lot of us, and, and I think I'm speaking for you guys, but a lot of us were kind of getting excited for this Sunday and, and getting excited to see Christian play his first game in the Premier League. And I feel like Sunday, I know in my opinion, it, it was kind of a letdown. Um, so, so that was disappointing to see. Uh, the one cool moment of, I guess, the end of the game was Paul Pogba coming up and, and giving Christian some words of encouragement. Um, you know, it, it's not a big thing uh, on the pitch, but it was a pretty cool moment off the pitch. So, um, you know, that was that was really cool to see. Uh, obviously, we don't know what was said, but, um, you know, that was that was really cool to see. So, uh yeah, so not the not the start to Christian Pulisic's Chelsea career that we were hoping for, but you know, nonetheless, uh, you know Chelsea have a lot of games this year. There's going to be a lot of rotation. They don't have kind of their some of their first choice players back, so it was no guarantee that if some of those players were there, Christian was going to be in the starting lineup. But it was a little disappointing to see a player like Mason Mount, who's I believe 19 or 20 years old, kind of like you know Christian Pulisic. Uh, getting that nod over him. Now, obviously, you know, Frank Lampard and him have history from from Derby last year. And we, you know, when we covered Dwayne Holmes last year, we, we saw, you know, the, the you know, how, how good of a player Mason Mount is and can be. But at the same time, you know, you, you would think that Frank would understand what uh, Christian could bring to the pitch and, and, you know, his ability, you know, Chelsea signed him for $73 million. So, um, you know, as much as I appreciate Lampard and his loyalty, um, I would have, you know, definitely liked to see Christian on the pitch. But we'll see what happens in the in the upcoming games. You know, we're filming this on a Tuesday, so Chelsea do play in the. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it's the Super Cup uh, tomorrow against Liverpool, which is basically the game between the Champions League winners and the Europa League winners. So, you know, we'll see if he's in the starting eleven for that game. Um, you would think that that he would be since, you know, Chelsea only played on Sunday. You know, that's only, what, two, three days of rest in between. So you would think that Frank would try to rotate the squad a little bit. It's it's not a game that they're probably going to be prioritizing too much. But, you know, like like I said, we'll see. And, uh, you know, next week we'll let you guys know. Hopefully we have some some better information on Christian. But uh, now let's let's move over to England or, excuse me, Germany. And talk about another player who kind of had a little bit of a disappointing performance this weekend, and that would be Josh Sargent. So, you know, Josh has has had a very good preseason. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of good things coming out of that Werder Bremen camp, and Florian Kofeldt's back at it this year, giving us a lot of encouraging words on Josh. But, you know, it remains to be seen how he actually uses them this year, and and if those words truly mean anything because last year he said a lot of good things about Josh and then he didn't play Josh. So, or he played him very little. I shouldn't say he didn't play him, but he played him not as much as it, he made it seem like he was going to. So, um, you know, with that being said, Josh did start their first official game of the season in the DFB Pokal. And I don't have the name of the team. It was, a, I believe, a fourth division team. So, um, you know, a, a low-down team that Werder Bremen shouldn't really have much uh, trouble with, and they didn't have much trouble with them. I believe they won the game 6-1, so um, yeah. But Josh did start. Uh, he started at right wing and played the first 60 minutes, and unfortunately didn't really get involved much in this game at all. Um, you know, he had, I believe it was only one shot on goal. Um, it was a, a very easy shot that the keeper saved, and wasn't really that that dangerous of an opportunity. So, you know, that was that was kind of disappointing. Um, like I said, this this team that they played, they were uh, I believe it was a fourth division team. So, you know, it was a team that that is on the same level of teams he faced when he was playing for the U23s. And you know, he had a, a not crazy, but a very good goal scoring record and when playing for Werder Bremen two in the U23s. So. You know, I, I would have thought or expected a little bit more production from him, um, some more dangerous moments. But I, other than that shot, which, like I said, wasn't it wasn't that dangerous of a an opportunity. He he was very, relatively non-existent in this game. I hate to say it, but uh, 
Yeah, so you know that's 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 disappointing again. Um, you know we've heard all these good things about his performance this preseason. You know we've even seen, or I, I've even you know watched multiple Bremen games this preseason, and he's looked he's looked good. You know he's looked a lot more confident. Um, he has had troubles finishing this preseason, but he's gotten in those opportunities or in those areas where he's you know. Uh, looking to score goals or, you know, he's in those areas where uh, he's creating goal scoring opportunities. So I thought that was very positive, but unfortunately this game was kind of a step back um, and it, it he kind of looked like he did last year for Bremen, um, you know, lost at times on the pitch or just not really in sync. And I think some of that is to do with the position he's playing. You know, Josh is and has been for the U.S. a, a number nine player, number nine striker. Um, you know, that's that's his role. That's his position. He's a player that likes to, you know, get into the box, be a poacher, be a finisher, have the ball come to him. You know, he doesn't love to do too much combining. Um, he can, you know, combine at the top of the box and, and, you know, play people in, play one touch passing. But uh, he's not a player that's really going to track back too much and, you know, get the ball and kind of connect and then run, you know, 40 yards upfield and, 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 you know, have to expend a lot of energy getting back defensively and, you know, moving around. He, he's a player that likes to stay central and he's like, he's a player that likes to stay upfield. Um, and honestly, he's very good at doing that. So I'm, I'm starting to get a little concerned that Bremen seem to think of him as a different type of player or seem to just play him in a different role. Um, you know, at times last year he did play in that striker role, that number nine position. But uh, you know, in order to get minutes in this in this team, it seems like he's going to have to try and play um, in that wing or kind of that uh, you know right forward position. Um, Bremen play with with three forwards up top that they do like to switch at times. But in this game, he he was basically um, isolated on the right kind of the whole time. So. Uh, you know, that was very disappointing, and I don't want to get too ahead of myself or, oh, excuse me, get too critical of his performances or, you know, where he is at Bremen, but there's definitely, I think, reason to be concerned about how Bremen are using him and how Bremen, I guess, view him. Um, you know, he's a player that needs to play up top, so if Bremen aren't going to give him minutes in that good position um, or that comfortable position for him, I honestly am, am starting to think maybe Bremen's not the place for him to be. So, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, start overreacting, but that's definitely something to monitor. And, you know, hopefully we'll see him get some more opportunities, some more opportunities at that nine position um, in the near future. So, you know, definitely we'll keep our eye on Josh and uh, report back, and hopefully we see him starting uh, next week. Now let's head over to France and talk about a player who made their debut this weekend for a new team, and that would be Tim Weah. So Tim was in the starting 11 for Lille, which was really exciting to see, and he was actually starting as a cam for Lille. So, you know, a little bit of a new position. We haven't really seen Tim play in that number 10 role, but that was kind of the, the task that Lille, um, you know, gave him for this, this start, first game against Nantes. And, uh, you know, he had a few bright moments. I know there was one um, really nice pass he had that was circulating around Twitter. Um, you know, really good ball into the box that, that found a player crashing in from the left. Um, you know, really, you know, really intelligent pass and, and kind of showed off Tim's vision. But unfortunately, other than that, you know, Tim, Tim didn't have the best game. Um, you know, he struggled. Uh, you know, we weren't able to really watch this game, so I don't want to, you know, say too much or, or make it seem like, uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, I, I don't want to speak for something that I, I didn't watch, but at the same time, I definitely want to report on it. But, uh, you know, Tim was, from what we heard, uh, a little loose with in possession, um, loose with his first touch. So that's, you know, all things we've kind of seen in the past, but, uh, you know, things that he's continuing to work on. So, uh, you know, it was definitely good coming away from this debut to see him, you know, on the field uh, for Lil. And that was something that, you know, at the end of last season, we weren't seeing him really get on the field for Celtic. So definitely 
good to see that Lil are, you know, prioritizing minutes for him. Um, you know, he did have that really bright moment in that pass. So, you know, that was, that, that's good. Um, you know, hopefully Lil, Lil see that and, uh, you know, think that he can be a difference maker going into next week. And Lil actually won this game too, I should say. Uh, they, they won 2-1 over Nant. So, um, you know, they got the job done and, and Tim Way was a part of it. So uh, definitely exciting. You know, Tim Way, I think, is, is starting to become, you know, one of our better players. Um, I wouldn't say just in the, the USM, for the USMNT, but in, in terms of players playing abroad and challenging themselves, I think Tim Way is, is starting to become, you know, a player right up there with uh, Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams. Um, you know, he started to, to really prove himself at the professional level. And, you know, this was, a, a, I would say, a pretty good start for Lil, um, or for his career at Lil, excuse me. But, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll keep our eye on him, and we hope to, you know, see him back in that starting 11 next week. Now let's, let's go over to the Netherlands and talk about a transfer that happened, uh, I believe it was last week, but unfortunately we weren't able to cover it this past week, but we do want to cover it today. And that would be Alex Mendez moving to Ajax. So a very big move for Alex. Um, you know, he was at the, the Freiburg Academy last, last season playing for the U19 team. He had some really bright moments and some really nice passes, long range goals for, for their academy team there. And then, uh, you know, at the World Cup, he had some, some very bright moments as well. Um, but unfortunately, it kind of finished on a, a sour note in that last game um, against Ecuador where, you know, didn't have his best game. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we kind of saw some of his weaknesses get exposed. But, uh, you know, there was definitely something in the works. You know, we heard some reports earlier in the summer linking him to a Real Madrid move or an Ajax move. And, uh, you know, he wasn't playing for Freiburg's U19s during the preseason. You know, if he was in the plans for first team minutes uh, at Freiburg. He wasn't with their, their summer tours. So, you know, in seeing that, it definitely seemed like there was some validity to those Ajax and Real Madrid rumors. And lo and behold, he, he made his move to Ajax. So, you know, this is a, a very big move for, for Alex and it's a, a great move in my opinion. I think, you know, Ajax is the perfect place for him to develop that technical ability he has and kind of those, um, you know, technical strengths that, that he has better than, honestly, probably anyone in our pool. Um, you know, his left foot is electric. And, you know, whether he's shooting the ball, passing the ball, um, you know, his long range passing with his left foot is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I think that's really gonna, you know, going to Ajax and, and being a part of an academy that, um, you know, teaches offensive football and is, you know, very good at developing players, very good at developing them technically. I think this is, you know, a perfect move for Alex. Um, you know, the Eredivisie too, uh, not the Eredivisie too, but the Eredivisie as well is a very technical league. And it's a league that you can kind of get away if you're not playing, um, or if you're not good at defense, or if you're not, you know, strong enough to, um, I don't, I don't even know if I want to say it that way, but it, it's not a league where, um, like take the championship, for example, um, you know, you always hear of how, how rough play is there and how um, physical play is. And there at VC, it's, it's definitely a more uh, skillful league. It's a more technically uh, sound league. It's, it's a league where, you know, players and teams aren't going to be beating up on each other. They're going to be looking to try and, um, you know, outpass other teams. And that fits Alex Mendez's play style perfectly. Um, so, so I think that's a great fit for him. I think, you know, at Freiburg, that was a team that prides themselves on playing a very physical and um, kind of blue collar style of soccer where they just like to get after other teams and they don't have the most skillful players. So, you know, him at, or excuse me, him at Freiburg didn't, didn't seem like a great fit and it, especially didn't seem like a great fit, um, you know, from, from some of the academy games we saw and then from, from what we saw of him at the U20 World Cup. It just seems like he has a lot to learn at the defensive level of the game. And, um, you know, he still has to mature physically. He's not, he's not um, you know, the biggest of players. He's not 
the most you know strong of players so uh, with him maturing you know right now he's only 18 um, you know that'll come so I think Ajax is great uh, he'll start off at young Ajax for the time being there will be some other really talented midfielders um, you know on that team as well with him so some names you should definitely keep in mind and and be on the lookout for him you know hopefully starting over them but also playing with is players like Jurgen Egenkamp, Eglenkamp, yeah, Eglenkamp, excuse me. Um, he got minutes last year for Ajax's first team and is one of the players that will probably be moved up to Ajax's first team this year. Um, he was a player that people were saying could replace Frankie de Jong, and they're really excited about him. So, so keep your eye out for him. Um, Ryan Gravenberg, uh, you know, he's another really talented center mid, um, kind of cam player. Uh, I believe he's 17 right now, uh, might have just turned 18, but he's a player that the Netherlands uh, are really excited about in their, in their youth setup. He's, he's someone that, um, you know, is one of the uh, top prospects in the world. So definitely keep your eye out on, for him. Um, and then there's another younger player. I believe right now he's only 15, but he did sign, I guess, like a professional contract with Ajax. Um, that doesn't mean he's it's a first team contract. He just signed kind of, um, you know, a professional contract with them. And that's uh, Nachu Unuvar. And he's at the moment, I think, one of the highest rated midfielders um, in his age class. And he's, like I said, I think 15 right now, but he's one of the um, like future uh, biggest prospects in the world, like one of those types of players. So, um, you know, he's a player that's playing for. Uh, or will be playing for Young Ajax this year, um, might play some time with their U19s, but he's a player that's, you know, 15 playing for a U23 team. So, you know, definitely if Alex can, you know, get minutes over those players and, and even get minutes with those players and, and kind of, you know, do well in the game time he gets, that'll be, you know, really good. And um, that'll definitely tell us that, you know, he's on the right uh, progression path and, uh, you know, he's a player that Ajax really, you know, have stock in and take pride in. So, um, yeah, it should be, you know, I actually be a great challenge for, for Alex and it should bring out the best in his game. So really excited about that. Now let's head over to, or actually, excuse me, let's stay at IX and let's talk about Serginho Dest, who has quickly become a first team player for them. So, you know, he got a lot of game time with their first team in preseason, went on a few of the, I guess, summer trips that they do, uh, preseason tours, and, um, you know, looked good in those minutes that he played. You know, he played a little bit at left back, uh, which was new or, you know, something we haven't really seen him do much. So that was really exciting and hopefully really exciting at the, uh, you know, USMNT level too. If we could see him potentially get time at left back, that would be, that would be good in my opinion. But uh, this past weekend, we actually saw him make his Air VC debut for Ajax. So congrats, Serginho. He came on um, and played the final 36 minutes at right back in their 5-0 win over FC Emin and looked the part. You know, he, he came onto the pitch um, and, and fit right in. Um, you know, he... he you know, did well defensively from the, the few highlights we saw, um, you know, didn't look like he was out of his element at all. And also like he usually does got forward and, and created a few chances. So very good for him. Um, you know, this is what we wanted to see from him. This is what, you know, we really want to see from, from all our players abroad, but this is, you know, we're just really excited to see a player taking advantage of his opportunities, um, you know, that he's that have come to him. And we really just hope that, uh, you know, a USMNT call up is, is around the corner somewhere. But, uh, you know, if an Air Divisi debut wasn't enough for Serginho, he actually went on to make his uh, Champions League debut uh, on Tuesday, today. And that was against PAOK in their Champions League qualifiers. And he subbed on for the second half. Uh, Ajax was tied at the moment, 1-1 uh, when he came on and uh, went on to score two more goals to make it 3-1. And then PAOK um, kind of brought one back real late in the game. But, you know, that's, that's a pretty big deal. You know, he subbed on for the, the whole second half, 
took out, uh, I believe it was Razman Marin, who's a center mid, and they moved uh, Nassar Mazarawi up to the, the center mid position or the, the CDM position, whatever. Uh, they basically moved him into the midfield for Ajax. And uh, Serginho slotted in at right back. Uh, didn't really get to see too many highlights of this, but uh, I believe he had like a, a 6.2 rating um, on foot mob and, uh, you know, completed most of his passes, uh, was sound, pretty sound defensively. So, so that was, uh, you know, that's, that's really exciting too, to see him make his Champions League debut at 18 years old. Uh, that's, you know, that's, that's, he's on the right track. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you know, great stuff for, from Serginho. Um, you know, this is a player that we're all really excited about. You know, he, he shows a lot of, uh, he's just su such a exciting, um, or he's just very driven. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. His, his like love for the game, um, I feel shows whenever he's on the pitch. Um, you know, he's a player that, that likes to, you know, do not do some tricks, but use some some tricks when he's when he's attacking. Um, you know, he's got a little flair to him. But uh, yeah, it's just it's it's so exciting. Um, you know, he, he's sound defensively, and I think he's got really soft feet going forward, and is could definitely be a, a big use for us, either at that that right back position or as a left back potentially for us uh, at the full national team level. So, you know, we'll keep uh, letting you guys know. Uh, hopefully. You know, Serginho keeps getting minutes to, to start the season here for Ajax. You know, that's that's a tough ask, but at the same time, it looks like, you know, Eric Ten Hag really, uh, really values him or, or thinks that he's a first team player that can contribute. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's hope for, for more minutes for, for Serginho. Excuse me. Now let's talk about uh, a player that moved to PSV, Ajax's fierce rivals, and that would be Chris Gloucester. So Chris finally made his um, long rumored move to PSV from Hanover's U19s. Um, excuse me, not Hanover's U19s, Hanover 96. Um, and yeah, it was a move that, you know, earlier in the summer, it was rumored that PSV, I guess, bid, what was it? It was like, I, it might've been even like 250 or, or 200 million euros and Basically, Hanover said, no, that's not good enough. We want at least a million euros. So that was kind of the narrative for, for the whole summer. Um, you know, Chris played a lot in preseason for Hanover. Um, unfortunately, didn't really stand out as much as we thought he was going to. Um, and I'm going to say it right now. I think Hanover is in a really bad spot. Uh, you know, I've watched, I think, three or four of their preseason games, like full games uh, this preseason, and they have not looked good in any one of them. So I'm, I'm kind of concerned for Sebastian Soto. Um, you know, he still hasn't, he hasn't signed a, a first team contract with them. And I kind of, I, I respect the move. I think Hanover is not a team that's gonna do well this year in the two Bundesliga, which is concerning. And, um, you know, Chris didn't, didn't really stand out for them in preseason. And then, you know, with not signing a, a first team contract, he kind of got pushed to the bench and, and they kind of moved on from him because either they thought, you know, PSV would come back with a higher bid or they just were kind of salty that, that Chris wasn't, um, you know, going to stick around for the, the long run. But PSV came back, uh, but only with a, a $250 million bid, so, or million euro bid. So, uh, you know, they kind of stuck firm with their price, but Hanover, you know, said, okay, we, we, we don't want Chris anymore. So, uh, yeah, the, I, I wasn't, I was kind of surprised to see the move happen, but I, like I said, I'm, I'm happy for Chris to kind of get away from Hanover and, and hopefully take to life over in, in the Netherlands and, and play with Richie Ledesma too for, for young PSV. So yeah, Chris, uh, you know, signed with PSV. We'll start off with that young PSV side, um, you know, he's a player that, that PSV had to pay more for because he's a non, um, you know, Dutch player. So that definitely tells me uh, that, you know, they, they rate him. They think he's, he's going to be a first team player for them at some point in his future. I'm not sure if that'll be this year. Um, you know, right now, I think they have two left backs on the roster that are, 
you know, pretty good left backs. I don't have the names of them at the moment, but, uh, you know, players that I think one of them just signed this year and they're both very young. So I, I'm not sure if we'll, we'll see his debut this year, but if you can kind of get into that young PSV side and, um, you know, solidify that left back position for himself, I think that could definitely lead to, um, you know, either a look this this season later on in the year or just, you know, going into next year, uh, you know, giving PSV an option to kind of sell one of their left backs on, um, you know, make a profit and then give Chris minutes and, and you know, see him as a player that will be first team ready for them. Um, that, that would kind of be the best career path or projection in my mind. Um, so, so yeah, really, really cool to see that. Uh, Really happy to see Chris get away from Hanover, uh, personally. So yeah, great move, and uh, yeah, we hope to to hear more about him. Now uh, let's talk about another move that happened. Uh, I believe it was like two weeks two weeks ago, and that was Eric Palmer Brown moving to Austria Vine. So Austria Vine is a team in the Austrian Bundesliga. They're a team that. Uh, Consistently, I would say challenges for for the league title over there. It's been a little tough recently because RB Salzburg has completely dominated that league, and they're a team that has some of the best talent, not only in in the league but in the in the world. Um, you know, they've produced players such as Sadio Mane, Nabi Keita. Um, you know, Amadou Haidara is a player that just moved to Leipzig last year and has looked very good. So, you know, they're a team that, that has a lot of talent. Um, and now Jesse Marsh coaches them and, and has all that talent at his disposal. So that's really cool. But uh, yeah, Eric Palmer Brown will be will be loaned to Austria Vine. Um, he projects as, I would say, a starter there um, from day one. You know, we'll have to see kind of, you know, what, uh, if, if that's true or not, you know, I think, uh, I don't think there was too many other center backs on that roster that had the experience he had. Um, and, you know, Man City sent him there for a reason, sent him there to develop. So I'd be kind of shocked if he didn't get, uh, you know, minutes right away. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. But, uh, yeah, you know, I wouldn't say this is a great move for, for Eric Palmer Brown, but it's kind of a, a necessary move, you know, uh, his his – loan spell at, at Breda last year was not very good. Um, you know, he got, he became a consistent starter for them by the end of the season, but that was a team that, that finished, I think it was last in the air to VC and, you know, got relegated pretty, pretty handedly. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but it seems like Eric will have to kind of resurrect his career here a little bit. And, um, you know, hopefully this, this, Austria Vine team will, will give him that platform. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing for Eric Palmer Brown with this with this loan is just getting consistent minutes, uh, becoming confident in his abilities. Uh, you know, ideally he would take, you know, a hold of this uh, this loan and, and, you know, force himself to become the starter if he's not from day one at Vine and, uh, you know, really look to be one of the best center backs in the Austrian Bundesliga. I think that should be his goal for the season. You know, that might sound a little aggressive, but at the same time, you know, it's the Austrian Bundesliga. Um, you know, it's a league that's probably on par with MLS. Um, you know, RB Salzburg, Red Bull Salzburg, however you want to say it, uh, is I think better than any team in, in MLS. But, uh, you know, it's a league from top to bottom that I don't think, you know, the worst teams in that league are, are too much uh, better than some of the worst teams in MLS. So, uh, yeah, I think his goal needs to be becoming one of the best uh, center backs in that league. And, you know, if he can do that, then hopefully that leads to maybe another shot at a, at a higher, league, higher league next year. And, uh, you know, we can be talking about him, you know, getting back on track, hopefully being a part or playing a role for this US U23 Olympic qualifying roster that, uh, or, you know, camp coming up here in the spring, uh, you know, that would be kind of the ideal uh, trajectory for him over this next year. Um, so let's hope he can 
you know, resurrect that career here at Vine and, uh, you know, become a, a player that we can, you know, be excited about. I feel like it's been a long time since, since EPB was a player that we thought could make it uh, and be, you know, a, a starting center back for us one day in the future for the, the USMNT. You know, he's a name that's kind of slipped off the radar. And I, I think it's it's fair. You know, he hasn't really shown that he can play up to the quality that it takes to play, uh, you know, at the international level. So now it's it's just kind of on him. So let's hope, let's hope it works out for him. But moving on to our final player we're going to cover today, and uh, that's another center back who made a move. And this time it's CCV, uh, Eric Palmer Brown's 2017 U20 World Cup partner. And uh, CCV moved to Stoke City on loan on the final day of the transfer window um, in England. So, you know, a pretty pretty good move for, for CCV. You know, Tottenham showed this preseason that he wasn't in their plans. And as unfortunate as that is, it's the reality. So, you know, CCV had to move on somewhere. There wasn't really uh, any Premier League teams that, that really needed a center back or were willing to take a, a risk on him. So in that case, you know, I'm fine with him going to the championship. Stoke is a team that, you know, was just relegated, not last season, but the season before. So they're a team that should have aspirations of, you know, reaching the Premier League again. So I kind of like that. Uh, they did finish in 16th last year. So for, you know, one year removed from, from the Premier League, finishing in 16th in the championship, that's a little discouraging. But they're a team that, you know, they have some center backs right now on the roster. Um, Bruno Martin Zindi, I believe, is still there. Ryan Shawcross, who's, you know, a, a legend at the club. Um, but he's also injured right now. So, you know, I think if CCV is not a starter or a consistent starter for the whole season, I think he will be kind of that third choice center back um, and that center back that they'll definitely give game time to. Uh, and that's a good situation for him. Um, you know, he played pretty well at Swansea last year. I think Swansea only finished in 10th in the championship, though. So uh, if he can be on a team that challenges for promotion, you know, that's always the, the goal in, in the championship. And, you know, that's what we're hoping from some of our other players in the championship. But, you know, if he can be uh, or even just make Stoke into a, uh, you know, promotion contender, then that would, uh, you know, be the goal for him. And that would, that would be good for a good loan move for him. So we'll have to, we'll have to see, you know, we'll see if he starts this next weekend um, for Stoke as uh, you know, the championship season is well underway. And uh, yeah, so that's all for this part of our episode today. Now let's head over to Quick Kicks. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show. It's none other than Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altador over the wall. So to start off Quick Kicks today, we want to let you guys know about Ethan Horvath's situation at Bruges. So unfortunately, uh, over the past week, Club Bruges made a move for Simone Mignolet, uh, the keeper from Liverpool, and it looks like he'll now be their number one keeper. So uh, you know, it remains to be seen whether Ethan stays and tries to fight for that number one position or if he gets transferred out this window, but uh, definitely you know, a situation to monitor and we'll report back to you guys. Now heading over to Germany, we want to let you guys know that Uli Janez this past weekend scored two goals and had one assist for Wolfsburg's U19s in their uh, 5-2 win over FC St. Pauli's U19s. Now heading over to England, Lyndon Gooch uh, played 90 minutes this weekend and scored a goal in Sunderland's 1-1 draw with Ipswich Town. Heading back to, uh, to Germany, we want to also let you guys know that West McKinney uh, played the final 32 minutes for Schalke in their 5-0 win, uh, DFB Pokal win. And this was, you know, great to see Weston back on the pitch. You know, he spent kind of a, a long part of the summer on vacation after the Gold Cup. So, uh, you know, he hasn't really been in the, the starting lineup yet for Schalke, but it was good to see him on the pitch. Now, uh, we want to also tell you about a player who is making a move back to MLS, and that would be a loan move, and that's for Andrew Gutman. 
So Andrew will be moving to FC Cincinnati and actually pay, played in their game this past weekend, and that's a loan move from Celtic. So he spent part of the summer at Celtic training, um, you know, in their preseason. Looked good from, from the small sample sizes we saw and then also some of the Twitter comments we read. So definitely, uh, you know, keep your eye on him in MLS. Now, heading over to Germany, we want to let you guys know that exciting young uh, Borussia Dortmund talent, Gio Reyna, uh, had a goal and two assists in his first uh, real game for Bundes or, excuse me, for BVB's U19s this past weekend. And they ended up winning that game 9-2. So, you know, congrats to Gio, and uh, let's hope this is just the start of a long, successful, well, hopefully not too long, but a successful U19 uh, season for him. Now heading over to Denmark, we want to let you guys know that Christian Kappas and Emmanuel Sabi both started and played 90 minutes, but unfortunately it was in a 2-0 loss uh, to Bronby. So, uh, you know, it's cool to see them both on the pitch, but unfortunately they weren't able to get the W. And now we want to finish today's episode with our Young Ya segment. And today that would, you know, the two players we want to talk about also play at Hobro. And the first one would be Yusuf Samuel. So Yusuf is a 22-year-old midfielder who most recently was in the Atlanta United Academy. And uh, yeah, he just signed for Hobro. So, you know, another American we'll have to keep our eye on at that club. And then the, the next player we want to talk about is Don Deedson Locius. So uh, Don is an 18-year-old forward who uh, played for the Kolonji Soccer Academy in uh, Georgia. So, you know, another player from Georgia that, uh, you know, Hobro swiped up and, and must have scouted. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what, what impact both those players can make over there in Denmark. But, you know, if they, they start making noise, we'll definitely report on it and let you guys know. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And, you know, as always, since Pat's not here today, definitely check out our social media pages. You know, we have an awesome Instagram account that, you know, we're still trying to, to get back up and running and, uh, you know, we're posting regularly and it's great content that you guys will definitely want to see. So uh, give that a look and, uh, you know, also check out our Twitter account as well. So today obviously was a little bit of a, a different episode with just me. Um, sorry if I rambled a little too much. Uh, it's a lot harder to do these episodes without, uh, without Pat here to, uh, you know, pro provide a lot of other insight that... Uh, that he always does. So, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll hopefully get the, uh, you know, the Google Hangout or new streaming device source uh, interface up and running next week. So, uh, yeah, you can expect, you know, hopefully if, if everything goes well, both of us to be back and, uh, you know, reporting on the start of the Bundesliga season uh, next week. So definitely keep your eye out for that. But, uh, yeah, there's only one thing to say to end this episode. And that'll be one day we will win the World Cup.